to forget with the power of hindsight in 2020. But in 2007, trouble was brewing at Sony. A disastrous start for the PlayStation 3 meant the company needed a big hit to mitigate the damage. And while Heavenly Sword would not prove to be the console's saviour, it's a game you shouldn't sleep on. With a high production narrative, solid combat fundamentals, and a stunning visual presentation, Ninja Theory are able to pad the game's brevity and some frustrating moments to deliver a great exclusive for what was, at the time, a burgeoning platform. After the Heavenly Sword is felled into the Land of Mortals, a single warrior clan vows to protect against its use. Nariko is a member of this clan, and despite a prophecy foretelling her birth, signalling a passage to peace, the clan is chased by the power-hungry Bohan, who seeks to claim the sword for its ultimate power. The storytelling is quite remarkable for its time, with a slew of heavy-hitting performances to help engross you in the tale. Anna Torv adds considerably to Nariko's characterization, with a profound battle between her duty as the fire horse and her desire to be free without ridicule for her mere existence. Andy Serkis, chewing up the scenery as Bohan, makes for a memorable and captivating foe. The pacing isn't always the smoothest, but for the most part, Heavenly Sword captures perfectly the feel of a blockbuster movie. Oh, please give it to me, or else I'll kill the old man painfully, and I can be quite inventive. Get the sword away from him! Oh. Kill her. It also captures the look of one with a technical presentation which would stand out amongst early PlayStation 3 titles. Characters bear excellent detail, from the motion captured facial expressions, to the fluid combat and cutscene animations. Environments look gorgeous, with stylish sun lighting and lots of artistic flair, as well as successfully integrating elements of different cultures. The only bummer is the technical hitches, such as screen tearing and frame rate stutters, but otherwise it's a visual spectacle. The sound fares just as well too, with fantastic voice work across the board, brutal sword slashes and other hard sound effects, and a soundtrack which feels bombastic and headstrong, just like the game's protagonist. It's a treat for the eyes and ears. Playing Heavenly Sword is, perhaps, not quite as rewarding. Luckily combat, the main meat of the game, is good fun. Taking a few cues from its peers, Nariko comes armed with three styles of sword, courtesy of the titular blade. You can freely switch between speed, ranged and power modes, with enemies using these same stances. It becomes akin to rock paper scissors where utilising blocking within each stance can open up enemies for damage encounters, or leave you open to attack if you respond without haste. Enemies come in a range of forms, from quicker ninjas to lumbering axe wielders and, several times throughout, tough boss fights which put your skills to the test. With a sweeping camera angle and other quirks similar, many wrote this off as a God of War clone, but there's enough tweaks and improvements to keep Ninja Theory's effort in contention. The problems arise when Heavenly Sword diverts from its combat. See, at key points throughout the story, you'll take control of a secondary character known as Kai. Her skills lie in wielding a crossbow, and to be frank, these sections stick out like a sore thumb. The initial archery challenge, requiring you to pick off guards before they reach your base, is woefully frustrating. The poor six axis control, which mercifully can be turned off, is useless, and even using analog control feels stiff and cumbersome. But things get worse, 
with segments allowing you to roam freely as Kai while fending off guards. Her lack of swordsmanship skills leaves her vulnerable, and these segments feel cat-handed to control and completely disparate from the rest of the game. While her presence feels increasingly like a fad as time goes on, you can't ignore these segments unfortunately. Watch out. The other huge flaw, which meant most reviewers wrote off Heavenly Sword at the time of its release, is that it's extremely brief. With a bit of dedication, you can probably polish this off within a single sitting, with some minor additions to keep you playing. Each level rewards you with unlockables for achieving combos, but this proves more effort than it's worth, even with some in-game perks. A completion unlocks Hell Mode, a tough step up from an admittedly easier main game. This may encourage a second run, but otherwise, there's not much else to Heavenly Sword. And yet, it can also be argued that Heavenly Sword ends when it needs to. Despite some inconsistencies and poorer segments, it never felt like the game dragged. It swings from quick time events with incredible action to more tempered sniping sections which, on a couple of occasions, will bring a smile to your face. Heavenly Sword would not serve as Sony's saviour, nor would it become a key series after failing to break even on its expensive budget. But for those looking for a well-crafted tale, solid hack and slash action, and one of the PS3's best showcases, Heavenly Sword may just punch the ticket. What have I told you about calling me that word? No. It's bad enough seeing you blot out the sun each day without being reminded that you sprang from my youthful and exuberant loins. Sorry, Daddy. 